Hi everyone, it's me Crafty Witch. Welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, welcome to my channel. Consider subscribing, hit the bell icon, hit the like video. Let's just get that bit out of the way if you want. But anyway, I want to do a quick video on this book. It's by Gemma Gary. It's called The Black Toad, West Country Witchcraft and Magic. Oh, sorry for the glare. It's kind of horrible, but whatever. It's not the book though. The book is fabulous. You got to go check it out. I don't want to wreck it for you, but the book is bloody awesome. Bloody awesome. I really have no complaints about this book, except for one little bit um, in... It's very well written. Very, very well written. Uh, she's got the forward, the introduction, and then she's got a chapter called Power and Preparation. Within that one particular chapter, she's got a little blurb here written, I'm assuming in Latin. She does not give any English translation whatsoever, which I thought was really odd because she does such a great job in this little tiny book. It's only like 130 some pages long, but it's a powerhouse of information. It's jam packed full of really good stuff, but she does a really good job throughout the whole entire book at explaining kind of like the rationale behind things or the reasons why things are done a certain way or certain things are used, blah, blah, blah. It's not like a spell book that says, here's the name of the spell, here's the ingredient list, and this is what you do. It's not like that at all. I don't have anything against those kind of books, but that book is not what this is about. She gives like the, the knowledge that goes behind that particular charm or spell that she's got written in this book whether it's the history or the lore, whatever the case might be. So that I think is really good. The book focuses on like magic witchcraft from the southwestern part of England around Devon and uh, Cornwall area. So it's pretty localized to that particular area. However, it's still, even if you're not into English witchcraft, I still think it's a really good book. You might be surprised. You might get some inspiration from it. I think the book is awesome. She does her research. She knows what she's talking about. She does stuff in here that is like incorporate. Do you hear my cat snoring? You can see her like right there. She's like snoring away. I don't know if the <laughs> phone is going to pick it up, but like she will incorporate things like blood and urine and animal organs and, and things like that into this book. So if that makes you kind of squeamish, uh, or if it kind of grosses you out or anything like that, just be prepared that that is part of the practice of traditional witchcraft and that kind of stuff is in here. Um, so just to be aware of that, but the book is like so well written, except for the part that she wrote in Latin with no English translation. I just don't know why. Why? I, I, I have no idea. I have no idea what that is. I can probably take the time and to go and translate it myself through Google or something like that, but I don't want to. Um, not, not right now. I'm a busy person. I know we all are. We all have busy lives and stuff like that. I really don't have the time to do that. I was really surprised because she does take so much time to actually go through and explain things. And I was just kind of shocked that she didn't explain what that blurb actually meant. So that's my only real kind of negative critique of the book. Aside from that, it is a fabulous book. Unfortunately, that part happened fairly early on <laughs> so don't let that put you off when I first saw that I was like oh don't tell me the whole book's like that it's not it's not just keep reading it's awesome it's a fabulous book so after the power and preparation chapter she does divide her book into three sections there's um old mother red cap which is like your protective and kind of more of your proactive type um part of the book and I'll just read to you quickly what the table of contents say under Old Mother Red Cap. It says protections and defenses, cure charms and protections against ailment, desires and good fortune and vision. So that's what Old Mother Red Cap 
what that section is. And then moving on, there's Old Mother Green Cap, and I'm sure you can guess what that's all about. So that's like your herb lore, working with trees and that kind of thing. So under that section in the table of contents, she has the virtues of trees, infusing of virtues, curative plant charms, protective plant charms, plant charms for love, black thorn blessing ash, and then last but not least, she's got plant charms for animals. So that includes like the second section. The last section is Old Mother Black Cap, and I'm sure you can guess what that is. It's curse magic and blasting, retaliation magic and counter blasting, weather, witchcraft, circles of power, and in league with the devil. So I learned some new things with regards to terminology, such as blasting, owl blinking, or owl blasting, uh, counter blasting, like things like that. I have not heard those particular terms before. I thought that was really interesting. Another interesting thing is throughout the book, the author included all of her own illustrations. Like she actually created that. I love that. I love owls, right? So I love that that is in there. And um, I mean, she's all the illustrations in the book are hers. She also has included from the Museum of Witchcraft at Boss Castle. Lots of there's photographs and stuff throughout the, the book about that as well. And yeah, it's, it's really a good book. It's a very quick read. It's like 130 some pages, but don't let the size fool you. It is a powerhouse, a, a, an incredible book filled so much information and how she's able to give like some historical lore and, and the rationale, but you know, for this and that and that kind of thing. And how she packs so much information into such a tiny book is beyond me. You know what this book reminds me of? This book reminds me of, you ever watch any kind of movie or TV show where you see like a little miniature house or something or something that looks really small on the outside, but then when you open the door and you walk inside, it's like this big giant mansion. It's like, that's what this book is like. <laughs> it's just... It explodes with all this information. It's just, it's awesome. It's such a good book. If you have a chance, go read it. I highly recommend it. I've never read any of her other books before. And I'm really glad to see books like this on the market. It's been out there for quite some time. Like this book is like, I don't know, 10 years old or something like that. So it's been around for quite some time. It's really nice to see books like this out there. Back in the day, like back in the 90s, 80s, uh, early 2000s, everything was so heavily Wicca based and I'm not knocking Wicca at all, but that's just, there was such that huge influx in the market, in the book realm, <laughs> um, that was like really Wicca based and like books like this, I never came across books like this. At that point in time and we didn't have Amazon back in the 90s so you couldn't just go and click click and order something and have it delivered to your door either and where I live which is like in the middle of nowhere in the middle of Canada in a rural community you are lucky if you even have anything new agey I'm not saying witchcraft is new agey but you're lucky if you even have a new age section in your bookstore and certain periods of time in certain places that just did not exist um now our local bookstore might have it's predominantly like if there's going to be anything like they'll have some kind of you know stuff on astro astrology they might have maybe a few things on wicca which is a huge improvement from the way things used to be but they would not carry something like this that has like, you know, talking about using a horse's heart in a protective charm. They, they don't carry stuff like this where I'm from. So it's really nice to see stuff like this because it's something that for myself, I found really lacking out there in the world. I had 
I have my share of books on Wicca and Druidism and all the different other kinds of stuff like that and magical practices and, and that kind of thing. And I didn't want more books like that. And for the longest time, I stopped buying those kind of like, I guess, pagan or magical related type of books because it was like just more of the same stuff being hashed over maybe by a different author, maybe using some different terminology, but it was still, it felt, it still had a very heavy like Wiccan flair to it. So I just didn't bother buying books for the longest time. I was, I guess, kind of disenchanted. And then recently I've been like looking more into books in this field. And like now we've got like I'd say within the last 10 years or so, there's been a definite influx of like, kind of like your nitty gritty kind of witchcraft or magical practices. So it's really nice to see books like this out on the market that it, this is not your kind of light and love type of book. This is your like, okay, let's harvest that horse's heart because, you know, old Nelly died and, you know, before we get rid of the horse's body will will harvest the the heart or um hey you know what we're gonna use some urine and we're not just gonna use it in a witch's bottle but we're gonna boil it first um she talks about that in in one of the charms here which i was like well if that's the case i've i've made witch's bottles in the past for protective purposes um and i've included bodily fluids and that kind of thing but I can honestly say I've never boiled my own urine and if I were to my recommendation for folks would be you might want to maybe go to a thrift store maybe get a secondhand pot or vessel of some sort that you do not use for cooking your food and use that to boil your urine if you're going to use that particular charm. That would be just my recommendation personally. If you're fine with using the same pot that you cook your mashed potatoes in, then you do you. But for me, I, that's not a go. Like even if it's washed out and disinfected, I, I don't want to do that. Um, so I would use something that I would never ever cook food in. But she uses stuff like that in this book and it just, it, it felt like, ah, yes, this is what makes my heart sing. Not boiling urine, but just that getting back to the nitty gritty, your, your basic witchcraft, basically, you know, like the old school stuff, you know, using what you had access to what you could harvest, whether from the wild or what have you, and just learning about this little part of the world that I have not ever been to yet in my life, but someday I would love to go there, and what their practices were, and some of the similarities, and there's a lot of differences, and it was such a good book. Just go and read it. Just go read it. The Black Toad, West Country Witchcraft and Magic, it might inspire you even if your path is totally different maybe maybe you're more nordic or you're more following a germanic um magical path or maybe a greek magical path or what have you you might still find some inspiration from here with regards to some of the charms and, and that kind of thing so I highly recommend this book. I definitely give this book like four and a half stars out of five. That's my recommendation. The Black Toad. Go check it out by Gemma Gary. So that's it for now. Ciao.